Hi everyone, this next statement will give the second answer to when we can swap limits uh, and expectations. This theorem is called Dominated Convergence Theorem. And it says the following. So let y and x1 and x2 and so on be random variables and assume that the random variables xn on one hand converge to a yet another random variable x almost surely. Assume also that the xn's in mod are dominated by the y random variable and this y random variable has a finite mean. This y of course is non-negative, in fact in, in just in case it's positive and it has a finite mean. Okay, These are the assumptions. <coughs> the statement is something familiar a little bit from monotone convergence. So the statement is that again limit swaps with expectation. So if I take the limit of the expectation of the xn, this limit exists and it is equal to the expectation of the limit of the xn, which is x. This is the limit of the xn, at least almost surely. And then the limit can be brought in and out the expectation. There is some further points. So the, it's also included in the statement that this expectation actually exists which is equivalent to saying that E of X mod is finite. Uh, this expectation is, is finite and exists. Okay. And uh, furthermore, we have that the expectation of the difference between X and then X in mod as well goes to zero. So these are all the statements of the theorem. So I can swap limit and expectation, uh, the limiting random variable has a finite mean, and we have this kind of convergence when the difference between x and the limiting sequence xn in expectation and mod goes to zero as n goes to infinity. Okay, this is dominated convergence theorem. Let's see the proof of this. What I'm going to start with is expectation of x, okay? And what I know is that almost surely x is the limit of the xn. So I can take a look at the limit of the xn's. Now, if I have an almost sure limit of the xn's, when I have a limit, that limit will be equal to the lim inf. So I have an almost sure limit, I always have a lim inf, and the lim inf is almost surely equal to the limit of the xn's. So the expectation of this limit is the same as the expectation of the lim inf. Here comes the previous statement, Fatu's lemma, which tells me that the expectation of the lim inf is always less than or equal to the lim inf of the expectations. Okay. Now, limit for the expectations, of course, for any sequence of numbers, limit is less than or equal than lim sub. And then here is the next step, kind of an inverse Fatus lemma or negative Fatus lemma applies for lim subs, homework work on the details. So if you essentially take a negative, a minus sign of Fatus lemma, you find that the lim sup of the e of the xn's is less than or equal than the e, the expectation of the lim sup of the xn's. Okay. However, the xn's are supposed to be convergent almost surely to the random variable x, so the lim sup is almost surely equal to the limit of the xn's, which is x, and if it's almost surely equal, then under the expectation, nobody will notice the difference. And now if I look at the two ends of this inequality, I see that e or ex bounds from below the limit of the exns 
and the limb soup is bounded from above by the same EX, it follows that EX must be equal to the limb inf of the EX sense which is equal to the limb soup of the EX sense just by the previous inequality and if I have limit uh, limb inf equals limb soup then it follows that I have a limit and that limit is actually equal uh, to the expectation of x okay and that's how I, I prove the first statement here right now it's also clear that uh, e of the xn is uh, smaller than or equal to e of the y which is finite and that proves my second statement that e of x is finite and finally if you want to show the third statement then you can repeat the whole statement to uh, on the random variable x and minus x repeat the whole statement on the random variable x n minus x why can i actually under the mod why can i repeat the argument on this random variable well first of all if the x n goes to x almost surely then this thing converges to zero almost surely and the other observation i can make is just by a triangle inequality x n is less than or equal to y under the mod almost surely at least and the almost sure limit x is also less than or equal to y under the mod so this thing is less than or equal to 2y which still has a finite expectation and everything we did before still applies and therefore it shows that this limit here almost sure xn minus x going to zero can be brought under the expectation and we can conclude that the expectation of xn minus x will also go to zero and that's the end of this proof